All right, part two on my tree series. Uh, today we're going to do the gray pine. And uh, we're going to the other extreme. My part one was the highest tree in the Sierra. And the gray pine is the lowest tree in the Sierra. You can probably tell I'm kind of hot and sweaty looking. It's 100 degrees out. And what's significant about these trees, this is the first conifer you're going to see going up the west slope of the Sierra Nevada. I'm about the 500 foot level right now, and some of these are growing. But you'll see them uh, up to two or 3,000 feet, sometimes a little higher if the conditions are right. Uh, but they usually grow in a mixed, like oak woodland forest. They'll, here we're mixed up with uh, blue pines and maybe a few valley oaks, a lot of poison oak. And as you get higher, you'll see it shift to black oaks. You, you won't see these with other, uh, other conifers until you get to a little higher elevations. Um, they, they, you might see them kind of going into, into the ponderosa pine forest at about three or 4,000 foot level. Uh, what's funny about these trees, you don't see them in Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Park, but they're all over Yosemite. If you go to Hetch Hetchy around the reservoir in Yosemite Valley, Hetch Hetchy is loaded with these trees. So, why are they called ghost pines, gray pines, bull pines? There's a lot of names for this tree. This is this tree is an example of why we need to have scientific names. Every tree has one scientific name, but a lot of them have a lot, a lot of uh, common names. These used to be known as digger pines, and they were changed uh, for valid reasons because that was a derogatory term. They used to be called digger pines because a lot of the indigenous people used to do a lot of harvesting of the nuts and the roots uh, for food. And uh, it became a derogatory term. So it was changed to gray pine is kind of the accepted name right now. So as you can see here, when they're younger, they're kind of single branched. They, they can almost be confused with a young ponderosa pine. In fact, they're uh, needles here, just like a ponderosa pine, come in bundles of three. But as they get older, uh, you can see they have multi trunks. They grow very erratically. They're a short lived tree. They grow fast. They're brittle wood. They have very brittle wood. Uh, once they get multi stemmed, they don't taper well. And they are a tree, a, a tree re remove, uh, removal company's dream. When you hear some power outage from a tree falling down or a storm, something knocked out the power, nine times out of 10, it's a gray pine. They break, they're brittle, and when they just, it's best to remove them if they're over a target area when they're younger, near a house or near a trail, but out in the forest, they're fine. Uh, they're, uh, these trees off here in the distance I have actually seen bald eagles in those trees. There's a pair of nesting bald eagles down here. I'm very close to an urban area too. So there is some purpose to these trees for the bird life. Uh, stellar jays and blue jays especially love these trees for, the, for the, uh, the nuts. The nuts are very nutritious. That's why the uh, native peoples harvested them a lot. Uh, it's not a good idea to stand under these trees on a windy day. They have these big cones. They get a lot of this. I've seen, seen them twice the size of this. And you can probably see a lot of sap. They're very sappy. They're heavy. They're spiny. These would have hurt if they fell on you. So uh, a lot of times you'll see, here's a smaller one that a squirrel has chewed off so they could get to the nuts. So there is still a food source for wildlife. But they're not good for uh, any forest products like timber, lumber. They even make lousy firewood because they're so sappy unless they're totally dry. All right, let's take a look at this bark on this. This is an old tree for, uh, for a gray pine. They usually fall down or break apart by this age. This thing's probably 50 to 100 years old. That's, that's the max you're going to get out of one of these trees. But Deeply furrowed bark when they're older. Uh, this one has some blackness on it. Signs from a previous fire. Uh, so 
it was thick enough. You can see my hands are black from. It was thick enough to resist resist fire. So they're pretty trees, and there's a lot of sap on these trees. I read somewhere that the Indians would take this sap here and chew it like like it was chewing gum. Uh, but one of the things I like about these trees, uh, they're they're on the west slope of the Sierra. You don't see them on the east slope much. And they're pretty much in the whole Sierra range. And we're in the low, low foothills at the very bottom of the Sierra right here. And you'll see them all the way up into the three, 4,000 foot elevation. But why I like these, it usually means I'm driving up to the Sierra, which is my, one of my favorite places. So I see these, I know better times are ahead and I'm going somewhere cool up into the mountains. So the gray pine, that's it. Thanks for watching.